everyone it's kelly here welcome if this is your first time visiting my channel welcome back if you've been before lovely to have you either way on this channel we talk books and today i am recording my wrap up for the month of march i only read four books this month i say only it's there's no shame in the number of books that you read so i don't know why i keep saying only when i when i read a smaller number of books um especially given that that's basically one a week and i'm absolutely 100 percent fine with that <laughs> So I have read four books this month, so I have four books to share with you today um, and I am going to uh, just tell them to you in the order in which I completed them. So the first book that I completed in the month of March was The Seven Moons of Mali Almeida uh, by Shahan. Uh, I did listen to this to see how to pronounce the last name. Let's see if I can do it. Karnatalaka. Did I get that right? I hope so. I'm not sure. Um, so this is a Sri Lankan author and he it was the winner of the 2022 Booker Prize. Uh, it was it was pretty good. It was pretty good. Um, I ended up giving it four stars. Uh, this it took me a little bit to get into it. So the, that's the only reason it's not a five star. Like that first bit, I guess, was just a bit disorientating. Like I just kind of didn't quite get into what was going on or like you know, connect with the characters, connect with, with what was happening until like a little bit into the book. And then it was incredibly compelling. And there were points at which I didn't want to put it down. So, um, yeah, I loved the cast of characters. The plot was really unique. Um, overall, this was a great read. Uh, I think, um, yeah, it, on the characters, they were very multi-dimensional types of characters. They weren't just sort of like good or evil. Like they, there was complexity to every character in this book and, you know, sort of things being, you know, as the plot kind of developed, you would learn more information and that was always incredibly interesting. So yeah, that was The Seven Moons of Mali Almeida and I'm going to read a quote to you. I've got a quote for you for each of these books um, that I that sort of stood out to me as something really interesting that I wanted to share. Uh, so this is the quote. You stumbled through dust and you saw the wailing. You could not hear it because your ears were abuzz with the low hum at the end of the world, the frequency that spirits swirled at, the white noise of a thousand screams. I think that gives you a really good idea of what the writing is like in this book. It's really, really good. <laughs> uh, so even though I haven't read of any of the other long listed books, it seems a worthy winner. So that was the first book that I read in the month of March. The second was a book that I was finishing up. This book took me a long time to read. Um, I started it the 5th of February and finished it on the 12th of March. So, you know, over a month to read because I just wasn't feeling super compelled to pick it up. Um, and that is Paradise by Abdul, Abdul Razak Gurna. Uh, this was a winner of the Nobel Prize in 2021. And I was reading this one with my Around the World book club. The previous one I also was reading with my Around the World book club. Um, uh, so the previous one was for Sri Lanka and this one was for, um, I can't even remember what country. I'll put it up on the screen. Anyhow, this was a book about, um, it sort of focused around a young boy. So this young boy is given to this merchant slash, uh, entrepreneur type of man uh, because his father owes him money or owes him favours and this was sort of like how he repaid that favour um, you know or it was like a, until your dad can pay the money but he's never going to pay the money so um, he is given to this man who he kind of calls his uncle and then he um, sort of go goes with him to his home and then it sort of the story unfolds from there so it's kind of a you know this boy coping with that situation but also like the people that he meets and the situations that he gets into with this with this guy who is you know can be quite um you know forceful you know he has a lot of money he has a lot of power but it's also sort of touches on colonialism and um you know the sort of impact of foreign traders coming in um and how that kind of impacts everything uh in Africa so um, yeah, so he's kind of traveling to different 
parts of Africa to, to trade and this boy will go with him sometimes on these and so we kind of follow along wherever he is. So um, yeah, there was a, a, some beautiful writing in here and also there were some important themes that were in, uh, explored but it just really lacked character development for me. Um, I thought Yusuf, the main character, was naive and didn't really seem to realise what was going on around him, which I usually find quite frustrating and I did find somewhat frustrating in this book as well. Um, one of the interesting things that we talked about when we talked about this book in my book club is that it is supposed to parallel the story of um, Yusuf in the Quran, but also uh, who is the, equip the same person as Joseph in the Bible. So if you know the story of Joseph, um, and I believe in the Quran that story is a bit more, ex you know, there's more to it, um, then, you know, that if I'd been aware of that more as I was reading, I think I would have taken more things out of this book. But I, as I wasn't aware of that, it just, yeah, didn't quite land for me all the time. Anyway, I do have a quote for you from this one. The scattered scrub took formidably gnarled and twisted forms as if existence was torture. So as I say, there was some really good writing in here, but it just didn't quite um, do it for me. So I ended up giving this 3.25 stars. So it wasn't terrible, but it wasn't compelling to, you know, continue picking up. Um, then I read a poetry collection. Um, so impulsively, I decided that I was going to read the Stella Prize long list this year. I don't know if I'm going to read every single book on the long list. I probably will read all of the short list. And this is one that is on the short list. Um, uh, but anyway, I bought this. I've spoken about it in my March book haul as well. Um, but yeah, let me tell you a bit more about it now. So this is The Jaguar by Sarah Holland Batt. Um, this is a collection um, that is all about the poet's father who has Parkinson's disease. And eventually he passes away, I think, as well, um, if memory serves correctly. Uh, he ended up having um, uh, Alzheimer's or dementia, a, a form of dementia, where he, um, and that was sort of impacting his sort of final years slash days, um, moving as he moved towards passing away, which he does within the book. So it's um, basically this started out as a really purposeful sort of collection of poetry and all of the poems kind of surrounded that, you know, the poet's experience of of her father um, kind of going through this horrific sort of situation where his health is deteriorating but it takes a really long time so it's you know sort of dealing with the emotions that come up with that and also just the logistics of it as well um, and those the parts of this collection that were very much focused on that were really good um, however I don't know if I just missed something but it takes a really sharp turn uh in the third section. So it's broken up into sections. So the third and I think the fourth section seem to just be like travel poetry. Um, so I don't know whether it's just that she was traveling while the father was sick, but it just the tone of these poems was completely different to the ones that had been at the beginning that I had really enjoyed. And they just didn't pack the same punch as the previous ones. Um, anyway, so nevertheless, there are some devastatingly beautiful poems in this collection so I would recommend reading it just for that it's quite short it didn't take me too long to read um, and here is the quote that I have for you I lift the glass to the light toast my father I am taking communion with whatever burns so some really beautiful language in this one and recommended I did only end up giving it three and a half stars but it wasn't terrible I just I was very confused by um, the sort of sharp turn in the middle of the book, uh, which seemed to kind of bring about books that were not books, poems that were not in the same theme. So it just didn't make sense to me. Um, the final book I I read, um, I read on audiobook and I don't have a physical copy of, but it's Iris by Fiona Kelly McGregor. Uh, this is another one that is shortlisted, sorry, longlisted for the Stella Prize. This one is not in the shortlist, um, but it is a sort of historical fiction, I suppose you would call it, um, and it is based on the life of a real person. So her name was Iris Weber, and she lived um, and in 
Sydney, which is the city in which I live, um, sort of in Surrey Hills, which is where I used to work. I don't work there anymore, but I walked the streets of Surrey Hills quite a lot. So there were a lot of um, places that were mentioned, street names, um, you know, specific pubs and so on um, that were mentioned in this book. So that was interesting in and of itself. So if you're from Sydney and you're in, and you've hang out at all in the Surrey Hills area, then you might find something of interest in here. But essentially, she became a prostitute and she was working for, uh, sorry, for um, Tilly Devine, who was a well-known um, sort of, I guess you would call her a madam. She coordinated prostitutes, um, owned a few properties and, and ran, you know, a, a business from there um, with prostitution. And then she ends up also working for Kate Lee, who was sort of Tilly Devine's kind of um, nemesis, almost like they had a bit of a war going on at the time. So this is sort of set in the 1930s um, in Sydney, where there was a lot of um, uh, crime. There were a lot of, um, you know, things going on that were not savoury, shall we say. Um, and so it sort of like gets into the nitty gritty of, of um, that time and what it was like for you know, this woman who um, was living in those times and dealing with some stuff. The other stuff that she's dealing with is that she, through in the middle of this book, discovers that she um, is attracted to women rather than men. And so that's an interesting sort of aspect of things. Um, she is, a, Iris herself is a really, really interesting character. Um, this was a very well-researched book. As I say, she's a real person um, and the author did a university level kind of uh research on this person and sort of her life so and there were lots of other you know other well-known figures of the time that crop up in the book so Tilly Devine and Kate Lee being two of them but there were also other you know other people that were you know infamous at the time um and you know there is more evidence about what happened in their lives um now what I will say is that there were far too many characters and what I think this book kind of suffered from a little bit is over research in the sense of, you know, the author has done all of this research and knows all of this information about different characters of the time and then feels the need to include everything. So I think it could have done with a bit of an edit in the sense of, you know, keeping the story flowing, um, you know, so there were characters that were sort of mentioned at the beginning of the book and then you know they didn't crop up again till the end and so you kind of had forgotten by the time you got to them again who they were and where they fit into the story and I think also um, too much emphasis was placed on certain kind of side characters you know and so you kind of go through this book thinking that something more is going to happen with these characters and then it doesn't so it just kind of um, in that way didn't quite come together it was still a good book and it was still compelling there was some good writing in it um but yeah it was I think the you know uh, inclusion of all of those elements came at the expense of the story at times so it was a bit disappointing in that way uh, but it wasn't terrible I gave it three and a half stars um and here is the quote for you for uh, this book every time you think you've won you need to take a step back and look again usually up. That's where the real winners are. The other thing that I will say as well that was a little bit disappointing about this book is that uh, it included um, slurs of the, that were used at the time. So they were very contextual. It wasn't, um, they weren't, uh, you know, put in there for shock value it was put in there for authenticity's sake and because of who this book is about and who you know was being explored um, and the world in which she lived um, but uh, there is a sort of caveat at the beginning of the book uh, where uh, the author says something along the lines of you know that these things have been included some of these slurs are no longer in use today some of them ha don't have the same weight that they did back then but some of them do um, and that included the N-word, and that was used several times throughout the book. I think um, in a book that is not focused on a character of colour, so this the, the uh, Iris was a white woman, um, you know, so those slurs were used about 
um, characters of colour uh, that were side characters in this book. I feel like if, um, you know, if the story had been about them, I think I could have somewhat, um, you know, not justified it, but like reconciled with the inclusion of these, of the N-word specifically, um, a little bit more. But because they were side characters and so, you know, there was a little bit of a commentary on how it wasn't, how black people were treated in that era, in that place, and it not being great. Um, so, you know, it was sympathetic, but it wasn't, I felt like um, those particular slurs could have been left out of this book um, and that storyline still being explored without using that word. I don't know. It's, I mean, it's hard in the context of a historical novel um, where it's a slur that would have been used at the time um, towards, in this case, it was Aboriginal people. But, yeah, I don't know. It just didn't feel quite right to me. So that was another thing and something to be aware of if you're thinking about picking this one up, um, just to know that, that that is in there. It is explained at the beginning of the, of the book that that there are going to be some things in there that, you know, um, don't reflect the, how, what the author thinks about things or, you know, it's not slurs that the, that the author would use, but still, um, they have been included. So I don't know, it just didn't feel quite right to me. Um, so that's something just, just to be aware of. All right. So those are my books. I've got, uh, these three plus Iris. Um, this was my reading month of March and I'm looking forward to April. I've got quite a few books on the go at the moment. And if you follow me over on um, TikTok or Instagram, you will have seen a little video that I put up, um, which was me talking about all of the books that I had seven books on the go at one point. Um, one of which was this one and the other was Iris. So two of them have been finished. Um, however, like I have quite a lot of books on the go. So I'm expecting that sort of at the beginning of April, I'm going to be finishing off uh, quite a few books. So I'll, I'm sure I'm going to have a lot to talk to you about when I wrap up April. I'm also um, going to be going on a trip um, in April, uh, which will, on my own. So that will also include a lot of reading, hopefully some secondhand book shopping in the area where I'm going um, to see, you know, and maybe pop into independent bookstores as well um, to see what I can um, pick up there. So I probably will have a, a, an extra haul um, in the month of April um, just to show you the books that I pick up there. Um, but other than that, I feel like this was a pretty successful um, reading month for me. Um, I'm ahead of my goal, my target. So my target is always um, now 52 books. So one book for every week of the year um, is my goal. Last year I exceeded it well and truly. Um, and I'm ahead of schedule for um, for this. So I think I'm up to about 15 books or so um, that I've read so far this year. Um, and we're only three months in. So that's a, that's good. I'm happy with that. Um, and happy with my reading this month. So we had some, some books that were, had a few things going on that I wasn't 100% happy with. But also, um, you know, they were also interesting books. And um, I think, I mean, definitely this one was my favourite that I read in the month of March. Um, and if you are into literary fiction, would recommend um, picking this one up because it was really, really good. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching and I will catch you on the next one. Bye.